When building real-world decision support systems using Bayesian networks, it's very common to have to model situations where the variables of interest have a ranked scale, like from very low to very high. And it's also common for such variables to be dependent on a combination of other variables which are also on a ranked scale. For example, suppose a company is marketing a new consumer product, then the attractiveness to the consumer is an example of a variable that could be on a ranked scale from very low to very high. And it's dependent on other variables like quality of packaging and effectiveness of advertising, which are also on a rank scale. Now, whereas typically these types of situations are quite tricky to model in a Bayesian network, the fact that a gene risk has a notion of rank nodes makes this type of modeling incredibly easy. So first of all, we'll select the create new node, discrete node. And if you go into properties, you can see that there are various selections for node type. What we're going to do is choose rank node. Then if you click on node states, you'll see that it automatically provides you with these state options. So it can go by default very low to very high, very high to very low, highest to lowest. And in fact, you can add to these. These are just provided as defaults. Let's just take the five scale default. So apply that. We'll enter a node name here and a unique identifier. Just make this a bit bigger. Now we're simply going to make a copy of that to define the other nodes, but this one, of course, is going to be quality of packaging. Now we're going to link these into this. Of course, I haven't defined the MPT for that at the moment. So if I look at that MPT, you can see why this would normally be a problem. So intuitively, we know that when the quality of the packaging is very low and the effectiveness of the advertising is very low, the attractiveness to the consumer is likely to be very low. So you might start to manually enter some entries here, but there's five times five times five, that's 125 different entries that you've got to make here. And you've got to make it in a way which is consistent and sensible. And that's basically hopeless trying to do that. And there's no reason to do it because what we actually know is that generally when these are low, this is gonna be low. And when these are high, this is gonna be high. And we might have learned that the effectiveness of the advertising is more important than the quality of the packaging. So if we can think of the underlying rank scale as being a numeric scale, then you can think of this as being some kind of a weighted function of the parents. And in a gene risk, the rank nodes always have an underlying numerical scale from naught to one. That's what allows us to define the node probability table as an expression. The mean of the expression is going to be the weighted function of the parents. And by right clicking here on mean, we get some predefined functions to choose from. Let's choose the weighted mean. We're going to say this is the weighted mean of the quality of packaging effectiveness advertised, but we want to move this up a bit. We want to make that, let's say, two. This slider bar up here expresses how confident we are in the precision of the function, so it translates into the variance of the function. We'll accept the default here and apply. And when we run the model now, we haven't changed those. We can see if this is doing what we want. So if, for example, the quality of the packaging is very low, that shifts our belief about the attractiveness to the consumer. And if the effectiveness of the advertising is also very low, then it's almost certain that this is not going to be attractive to the consumer. If this is very high and this one is very low, then it tends to be more towards the low because effectiveness of advertising was weighting higher than the quality of packaging. Now you might decide that there's more uncertainty about this than is expressed there. So we'll just increase the variance manually. And as you can see, that creates more uncertainty. Let's just clear all the observations and reset the model. Let's look again at the MPT for this node. If I select manual here, I can see the underlying table that was automatically generated from the expression. And if I want, I could also manually edit this. And this is all explained in accompanying papers why and how it does this and why it works. To show you how effective it is, it also preserves everything you'd expect about things like 
the back propagation reasoning away. So if, for example, we discover that a particular product was highly attractive to consumers, then it's already saying, well, it's most likely that there was highly effective advertising and probably the packaging was good as well. Suppose actually that in this case, the effectiveness of the advertising was quite low. This is almost therefore completely explained by the quality of the packaging having to be very high. Whereas if that was very high, we'd be less sure that there was any importance on the quality of the packaging. What I'm next going to do is add another node to this model to show you how flexible and powerful the rank node approach is. Let's suppose that in addition to quality of packaging and advertising, we decide that pricing has to be in there. Now this time, to be consistent with the weighted function, we know that pricing has to go from very high to very low to be attractive to the consumer. So we we'll simply add that. But of course, now we've got to redefine this MPT. I could simply manually put in the price there with a weighting, or I can just go back to the weighted mean expression and add price, and I might decide that price is the most important thing. Just reset these. If the price is very high, then irrespective of the quality of packaging, the effectiveness of advertising, it's unlikely to be highly attractive to the consumer. But this still isn't quite right, because price has to take account of the quality or the perceived quality of the product. And we also need to think about the value for money. Yeah, we certainly want that to go from very low to very high. And we also want one for perceived quality. We don't want that link there. What we want is value for money to be based on price and perceived quality. And of course, the lower the price and the higher the perceived quality, the greater the value for money. So again, we want to put an expression in here. Try that out. Link this into here. And again, now we go back to this. We want value for money to have the highest weighting here. We can run the model now. In this case, if the price is very low and the perceived quality is very high, it's becoming very attractive to the customer because there's a very high value for money perception here. I also want to show how easy it is to change these scale types. So suppose that effectiveness of advertising, we decide we want to be on a smaller or higher scale. Let's first, we'll take a smaller scale. So I've changed the scale there. Even though that scale's changed, I don't have to make any change to that table because it's still the same weighted expression. And similarly, if I decided that, that needed to be a finer grain scale, I suppose I even want to add my own thing at the end here. Incredible. When I run the model, Everything's there. And if this really was incredible, I expect this to push up a bit more, which it does. And the final point I'll illustrate is how we can also use ranked nodes to model indicators of these things. So let's suppose that the effectiveness of the advertising is indirectly measured by, let's say, the number of views of an advertising video. Then what I'm gonna do here is to define the expression where the mean now is just the parent. So it's just based on that. But how well the, the number of video views captures our understanding of effectiveness is now completely determined by the variance. If we think that there's a very strong correlation, then we can put a very low variance in here. In that case, given that we've got incredible advertising here, I expect that to be high, which it is. On the other hand, if we think that it's not such a good indicator, I can make that much less certain and run it again and we're much less certain about the video views. If 
I clear that observation, and let's suppose there are a very high number of video views, then we're much less certain about the effectiveness of the advertising.